So the next Laravel performance win I want to show you is related to how we get data out of the database and specifically what to do when we have some rather large queries or large amounts of data getting returned from some queries. And in this case, what I want to show you is how to use Laravel's chunking feature. Now I'll just show you right after that what we can do for this. So I have a query we want to run. I want to get some domain information out of my page views table. So if we head on over here and we'll see the page views table, we have a lot of page views. It's all fake data, the URIs, the domain, and created at dates, and what customer and user ID that all relates to. So we're going to select domain from page views where domain ends in .biz, and where created at is greater than or equal to a date, which is, I believe is about 30 days from today's date. And we'll run that, and we get quite a few results, uh, about 102,000 results in 16 milliseconds. So it's pretty quick just running a uh, direct query from here. Let's see that in PHP Storm. I'm going to use the app page view class, and using page view, we're going to select domain. So I only want just the field domain. I don't want everything from the table. I'm going to say where domain is like. Dot biz. So and basically we have the wildcard there and we're saying any domain that ends in dot biz and where it's created at is greater than or equal to the following date. So I'm going to do, let's see, new date time, a new date time object. I'm going to throw it a timestamp. So we'll start that with the at symbol and I'll do string to time negative 30 days. And then we'll just get that. Let's see. So I'll do page views. And I'm not going to return the page views. I don't want to show those all in the browser. I'm just going to get and do that query and have all those page views saved in this variable. So let's go to the browser and we'll head to the slash play page and we'll see how much time and memory this takes. Now the other thing we're going to do is see some weird things here, right? So it takes 110 megabytes. That makes sense, I think, because it's a lot of data and 2.7 seconds because it's a slow query. Now I'm going to show you something weird here, and that is if I keep refreshing this, the amount of memory usage goes way down, and the number of seconds stays kind of pretty consistent. But every time I refresh this, the memory usage goes down. And I think this is based off of the way debug bar actually grabs the amount of memory uh, or measures it. It uses the uh, let's see PHP function about getting peak memory usage, and that does it in a certain way where it might not be reporting this accurately every time, or at least I'm not sure I believe it. So one thing I add here is actually a xdebug specific function because I have xdebug enabled and it uses xdebug peak memory usage and then I just divide it to get the amount of megabytes instead of just showing it as byte usage. So we can refresh this again and we'll see that we're still going to be at a high memory usage, 106 megabytes. And that's a lot per request, even though it says 14. I don't think I really believe this. We're getting the same amount of data out of that database every request, so I think it's still a pretty high amount. If you know better, definitely let me know. But in either case, let's see what we can do about this. So we are getting those, I think I said, what, 120,000 requests or so, or page views. What I'm going to do is add the chunk function at the end of this. And what chunk is going to let us do is divide this query up. So I know I'm going to get like 120,000 out. I want to get 10,000 page views at a time. What this is going to do is make separate queries so it only grabs 10,000 at a time. Let's say I have 120,000 and I divide that by 10,000. That's going to make 12 queries overall. So we'll see what it actually does, but it should be something about that. And then we can add a closure to handle the chunked page views. So I'll do just the uh, variable called page views in here. And what it's going to do is pass in the 10,000 page views into this function through this closure, and then I can just do something with page views. So I can do something on that 10,000 page views and maybe aggregate the results uh, with a temporary function or something like that. Either way, this lets me chunk them, so I'll use less memory overall, even if I do it at the expense of more database queries. I have to do this a lot for reporting. I typically do it in a uh, queue because the query queries are pretty slow, something where it can periodically churn some numbers and save that result somewhere. This isn't necessarily something you want to do if the query takes a long time on every page request for your users, but you know your use cases will all be different. So I'm just going to hit refresh here and just let this go. It's going to take a little bit of time because it does, like I said, more queries. In fact, we can go here and see. I'll run this. It was uh, 102, so that's going to be 102. 228 divided by 10,000 requests per query, so 11 queries. All right, and it's done. And 11 queries, exactly like we said. The total memory usage here, look, only 22 megabytes. It's no longer in the 100 megabytes range. So while it took 10 seconds instead of two and a half seconds, 
the trade-off was the memory usage reduction was a lot. Now, you have to decide when you have large queries like this or queries that result in a lot of rows back, how to handle them, right? But we can see how chunking works. It gets offset zero, get 10,000, and then it just keeps offsetting until it finishes. And there's, of course, other optimizations you can make in the database level, which we'll actually get into in the series. But for now, just know that chunking is a great way to do large queries or handle larger amounts of data coming from your database using a lot less memory. So you won't choke your server up. And I think that is a good trade-off for time, especially because you have options, or hopefully we'll have options like being able to push a large query off into a queue and then just save the results somewhere and show those results to like an admin user at a report section or an actual user of your application. If you can make it in such a way where the user expects that query to take some time and the results to come back after a little bit of time, like using a loading screen or, or saying we'll email you when these results are done or something like that. There's a lot of options for you, but this is a great way to reduce the memory usage. So if you have a lot of these queries happening at the same time, you're not overloading your server. You're kind of spreading out that memory usage over more time, which servers are more able to handle. That kind of lets you have more going on in that server, more requests happening per time, which equates to more users using that application on less servers. But of course, like I mentioned, the trade-off there is more time for the less memory usage. Last thing I'll do is just check out the docs for that. So let's see, laravel.com, we can go to chunking. Let's check out the chunking section. This is on Query Builder. So I actually did it off of a page view object here, which is a model, but you can do it off of a regular query as well. So just the table users and order by, et cetera, et cetera. So you use a chunk message, you get to feed it into a closure. It's very useful for writing artisan commands that process thousands of records. It's basically acknowledging that trade-off. It takes more time, but you use less memory, and therefore you might not necessarily have to have a larger server or more servers to handle churning through queries like this.